Carolyn Wisecup, and I am going to be showing you the bare bones basics. Um, we've realized that some of you may not understand how to set up a game of Animo. You, this may be your first time. You may have just bought, you know, some starter decks, something like that. So I'm going to show you just the kind of the basics of what the parts of the mat do, how to kind of set up your game to where it's easier to understand. And then I'm also going to go through and show you what types of cards there are and where you can find certain information on certain types of cards from both set one and set two. Now, keep in mind, it is our, our understanding that set one cards will be being phased out in some of these newer releases that are coming out but you're still going to find a lot of set one stuff at the moment and at the moment you can still use set one and set two um, in your decks like if you're building your own deck so i'm going to show you both set one and set two because like there's some different wording they've updated the designs things like that so we're going to start off with the mat itself so this is what your gameplay mat looks like you're going to roll this out um, there are a couple different versions of the mat. This is the most recent one. Um, this is the one that you're probably going to find the most of because the original mat, um, there was a Kickstarter mat, which was a double mat, which we have a copy of. And then there was also an Armorino mat. But as far as I know, they are actually out of stock of those. So these are basically the mats that you're going to find now. So these are the most updated, like I said. So in set two, they released something called a truth seeker. And so the set one does not include truth seekers. So the set one mat does not have this space here. This is a strictly set two and forward thing that's going to be happening. So your truth seeker is going to go up here. You begin the game with your truth seeker already on your play field. So that's going to start up here. Now, just keep in mind, if you are the first person in a two-player game, the first player cannot use their Truth Seeker's ability on the first turn. However, the Truth Seeker also counts as power, which I will talk about later. You are allowed to use the power of your Truth Seeker, just not his ability or her ability. So we'll go into that a little bit later. The next part of your mat, which you're going to be using on your first turn, hopefully, um, is going to be your power pool right here. So like it says here on the mat, only one power card can be added, may be added to your power pool from your hand per turn. Now, there are a few ex um, exclusions to this rule, but it is based on a card's ability or action. And so that's something that is an exception to this rule, but this is your basic hand that you pull. If you pull a power card, you can only lay one down per turn, unless you have a card in Animo that's going to allow you to have an excuse to that rule. Again, we'll talk about that later. The next part of your mat that you're going to be focusing on is your small group right here. So this is where most of the action happens. And your small group, you can have up to four Animo in your small group at one time. Now, if your small group is full of Animo, you are allowed to exchange Animo from your hand. The one that you pull out of your small group then goes to your discard pile. Again, we can kind of talk about that a little bit later. Um, the next part of your play mat that you're going to be working on is kind of this center play field right here. So if you have an Animo that you're going to be moving out to either face a Cine or to get Virtue Points, this is kind of that area that you're going to set it. And if you have to leave it on the field to um, defeat a Cine, then this is kind of where it's going to hang out. Um, this is also where you're going to lay story cards down for your opponent to be able to see them. And while you go do whatever your story card tells you that you're going to be doing. The next side of this is going to be your discard pile. So any Animo that you have already used and is no longer useful to you out here at the end of your turn, at the end of your score phase, anything like that, it's going to go to your discard pile. There are certain other times when things will be going, but this is your discard pile. This is where you will have your deck. Your deck will remain face down, and this is where you draw from at the beginning of your turn. And you can also draw depending on if you have a card that says you're drawing cards, things like that. So this is always going to be face down. Your discard pile, however, will be face up. So you can still see what's in your discard pile. 
And then this area is your defeated sinnies. So if you've set a sinny out on your opponent, you're going to set that on your opponent's mat, not your own. Um, so once you've put that sinny out there and they've defeated it, you will then take that sinny and put it in your defeated sinnies pile. This is to keep track of your sinnies, which ones, and to have those over here and not going into your discard pile because you are able to interact with your discard pile in certain ways. However, once a defeated sinny is over here, you can no longer interact with that sinny. And we also have your sinny counter, because one of the victory conditions for Animo is defeating six sinnies. Now, so at the beginning of your game, you're going to set up everything. So in the Draylight and Stagnetic decks, they will come with these little power cards, or I'm not sorry, power, not power cards. Um, they're going to come with your victory point counters. And so these are double-sided to go up to 60 points. And this one has up to 45. So those kind of just kind of hang out over here. This is where I personally like to put them. However, you can put them just about anywhere, as long as they're not covering one of your areas that other things are going to go. I personally like to just put them here. It also comes with this little cube, so you can mark your victory points, which is great. It is also going to come with a Cine counter token. So I like to just kind of hang this little dude out over here, and then that way I can move him to whatever number Cine that I have defeated. They also come with certain types of tokens. Now these were from the Kickstarter um, for the Set 2 Cross Trainers expansion. Um, the, otherwise they will come with little, um, kind of a they're, they come with a thicker token, similar to these. These are just the little wooden ones that we have. And so these are going to mark your power as you're using them in your score phase. At the beginning of your turn, you will remove them and kind of place them over here again. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to have these. So for set one, they had a different type of marker card and they had different tokens. Um, however, to make it easier, my husband and I actually used 20 sided dice. We had three of these. And so we would just kind of hang these little dudes out here with our score. Um, and then we had actually gone out and bought some little markers that you could place on your power because it's kind of hard sometimes to pick up these, you know, if you, if you don't have fingernails, you know, or something, the, um, the ones that come with the starter decks, I just... We didn't really like him that much because we played quite often. So we just decided to kind of upgrade our own stuff. This is something that you can get just about anywhere. So these were kind of things that we had done for set one since they didn't have the better system that we have here. So that's just what we had there just to show you guys. So this is kind of how we set up our gameplay before we kind of pull everything out. So again, I'm going to start off with set two here. And so with your truth seeker, so the way that you can see what a truth seeker is, is obviously it's going to say truth seeker at the top and it's going to have a humanoid character <laughs> right here. And there are two, three, four, 12 of these, I believe. And there's two for each color that there's a, that there is. He is a Holy Spirit. So down here in the corner, he has the symbol for the Holy Spirit. And this is on certain cards that are Holy Spirit cards. It's on power cards, things like that. So you're going to see this little dove character, you know, in a lot of different things. That means that he is a Holy Spirit. So it's going to have your character. It's going to have his name. And then it's going to have his ability right here. So it says his ability is once per turn, you may reveal an animal from your hand and search your deck for the previous growth stage of that animal and shuffle your deck afterwards. And then down here in gray, it says this card provides one Holy Spirit power per turn. So at the beginning of your game, your truth seeker is going to go up here in his little space and that's where he's going to stay. So this would be the beginning of our game. We would have our deck shuffled and we would have our opponent cut that deck you know, in half or however, and then you would set it over here on your deck space. Okay. So that's how you would start your game. Now, since this is set two, I wanted to show you. So this is what a power card is going to look like. It has the 
image for whatever type it is. In this case, this is a love type. And it's going to be kind of color coordinated. All love cards are usually kind of a red theme around the card. And they're all going to have this symbol on it. So this is how you know that it's love. And so this would end up going over in your power place over here. There are certain types of special power cards. Currently, there are only two types. There is prayer and there is fasting. I want to show you prayer. So this is the upgraded prayer card. So this is a special card and it says this provides one faith, hope or love power per turn. And it shows you your symbols up here along with that color scheme again. So like I said, that color scheme is going to be kind of that theme of the deck. So if you have hope cards, they're going to be a yellow theme and they're going to have this little sun symbol on them. If you have faith, they're going to have this little kind of fire symbol here and they're kind of a bluish purple color. So we've got those. So the different types of power that we currently have in the game are faith, hope, love, and Holy Spirit. The next type of card that we have here is a animal. So this is an animal that he is an ultra. So he's a big boy. So on your animal here, you're going to have your type up here in the corner. So it's going to have your type up here in the corner. So again, he's love. He's kind of got that reddish background, red accents on him. So that's how you know that he's love along with that symbol up here. We know that he is a level one because it says level one right here. All of your ultras are going to be level one cards. Now it's going to have your virtue points over here in the corner. So he has 11 virtue points that he gets you. It's going to have your larger image here. And then it's going to have his attribute, which his attribute is to speak life. His name is up here. He's Saltini. And right here is his cost. So in order to play this card from your small group to your play area to either defeat a Sini or to get points, he costs two love and one unspecified. So currently I have three power over here. So I could use this one for one love. This one for my other love, because he can get anything up here of faith, hope, or love. And one unspecified, I could use my Holy Spirit power to send him out to get 11 points. On your ultra cards, you're also going to have your Bible verse down here. And then at the bottom where it talks about the Bible verse, where it says where it is from, it's also going to have this little plus and a number here. So that is actually when you play the hide it in your heart version of the game. That does not come into play for sharpen your sword. So wherever it says, you know, plus something, that is for hide it in your heart, not sharpen your sword. Now at the bottom here, it tells you what number card it is from the release. So in this case, he is number 47 out of 144 cards that were in the expansion. And it has the name of the artist who created Saltini. So some of them are holographic foil type cards. That's why he's a little bit shinier and special. So that is what an ultra card is going to look like. So I'm going to stick him in my small group. Next we have Lily. Lily is a Holy Spirit animal up here by her symbol. And she is a level one. She is worth three virtue points. And her attribute is peace and she costs one Holy Spirit. So for example, if we wanted to play her from our small group, we could use Simon's Holy Spirit power right here to pay for Lily's cost. Now, Lily is a little bit different. Lily has an action. An action is notified here by this little black box, and an action comes into play when you are actually playing that to either get points or to defeat a Sinny. So when you have paid the cost, that's when the action comes into play. So Lily's action says, search your deck for any level one faith, hope, or love animal and place it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, for example, if you wanted to go search a level one, you could search any level one that is in your deck. Now, we could also search for Saltini Ultra with Lily. However, there are some cards that search for level ones that do exclude ultras. So you have to be careful about the wording here. 
but again, an action is played when you have paid the cost. So she has a verse down here that is gonna be kinda of in this brighter box. And again, that little red plus and whatever number here, that is for hide it in your heart. And then again, the number of the card and the name of the artist. Place her in the small group. And next we have a regular animo that does not have an action or ability. So this is Floraline. We know that she is Holy Spirit. She is a level one and she is worth seven virtue points. Her attribute is freedom and she has a specified cost of one Holy Spirit and two of anything. So we could, again, we could use the three power that we have out here to pay for her cost. Now, again, you have your Bible verse down here. She is also plus something and hide it in your heart. However, Floraline is a little bit different because Floraline has a growth stage. So what you would do is if you wanted to grow an animal, you would lay this down here in your small group. And if you have the level two in your hand, you can grow that on top of your level one. Now, how do we know this? We know that Floraline has the same name and in set two, any growth stage has the same name. In set one, the animo do have different names and we'll get to that later. So Floraline, this is a level two. Level two is down here by this banner. There is a little part of a green banner up here. And then you, there is your yellow banner for your level two. Floraline is worth eight. Her attribute is set free, has a specified cost of Holy Spirit and one of anything. And she has a green box down here called an ability. Now, an ability versus an action, a, an ability is any time, can be used any time that the animo is in your small group. So the ability, this one says, if you are facing a sinny, this card has no activation cost. Again, has a Bible verse down here, and this one would grow on top of your other card. Now, we have had some questions in the past that if you grow an animo, do you get both of the costs? No. Once it is on top of this card, it is now worth eight. You do not get the seven and the eight. So whatever one is on top, that is the card that you, that is the price that you get, and it costs whatever is on this top card. Now there are level threes, I don't have one right here, but the level three has a banner. It has the green, it has a yellow banner, and then it has a red banner that says level three. Next, we have a love animo here. This is Harmony. Harmony is a love animo that is a level one and is worth three, and has the attribute of love bond and a specified cost of one love. Harmony also has an ability, again, known by this green box, and the ability happens when this is in your small group. So Harmony's ability is, if this card is in your small group at the same time as the Holy Spirit Harmony, you may search your deck for Harmony level two and shuffle your deck afterwards. Now, there are some cards that have the same name that are different types. So for example, there's another one named Fondly. Fondly level one is a love animal. Fondly level two is a universal similar to Harmony. So to show that, we have Harmony level two. Harmony level two is a universal animal, which is kind of this purple color here and has this little crown. So universal animal, they don't have one of these other colors over here. And specifically Harmony, Harmony's pretty cool because Harmony actually has a specified cost of two different types of power here. So to play Harmony, you have to have a Holy Spirit and love in your power pool to be able to play Harmony. Next, we move on to Sinnies. This is a Sinny that does not have an action or ability. This Sinny, so we know he's a Sinny because he has the black mark up here. And so unlike an Animo, where your type is over here, a Sinny's type is on the left. And this is on the right. So he has 12 points. So to defeat him, we would need 12 points before we can actually gain any more points 
to try and win by victory points. So for example, Harmony, being 12, could defeat Tollcrow. So Tollcrow, you have your creature here, and down here is his attribute, which is he is a due penalty. They have a Bible verse down here and where it is found, but they also have this little mark right here, which is a weakness. So there is one way to defeat Sinis by overcoming them with virtue points, or another way is to defeat them by their weakness. So in this case, Tolcrow's weakness is Beeliever. Beeliever is a faith animal, and if you have Beeliever in your small group, you can hand that card to your opponent, and you can recite the Bible verse that is on Beeliever. And if you are able to recite the Bible verse, you defeat Tolcrow without having to overcome him by virtue points. So this is what a Sinny looks like. They have a kind of this black background here. And there are also Sinnies that have actions and abilities. So in this case, this one has an action. So in this case, this is detestable. He is worth 10 and he has these little markers here. So this one lets you know that he has something that's gonna happen with him, in this case, an action. This over here says times one. So this, this action only happens once. There are some of them that have a little infinity symbol and that action stays in play as long as this Sinny is on you or your opponent. So in this case, his action is your opponent must discard one of their equipment cards that is in play. Now, if you don't have an equipment card in play, obviously this is not going to apply to you. He has his verse down here where it's found and his weakness is true blue. True blue is also a faith animal. So this is what it looks like when it has an action. Now, a Cine with an ability is Scornet. So Scornet has this little infinity symbol over here, meaning this ability is in play as long as Scornet is against either you or your opponent. So his ability, which again, abilities are green, actions are black. Ability says, you may have up to three Scornets in your deck and play them on top of each other to create a swarm. The swarm has a defense of the sum of each Scornet, but only counts as one Sinny when defeated. So for example, if you had two Scornets, it would cost 12 to overcome Scornet instead of just six. So this ability so when you create a deck, you can only have one of each kind of Cine, except, again, this is that exception to that because this card says that you can have up to three in your deck. So those are different types of Cines. Well, Cines also have a Mega. This is what a Mega Cine looks like. Mega Cines are going to have a higher cost up here. And this one, because he's a mega, again, he has that more of a fuller art look like the ultras do. And but again, he's going to have this kind of blackish background. So this is Scorch. He is holographic. He's a little bit shinier than most. And down here, he is a fire starter, but he does not have an action or ability. He is just big. Again, he has his verse down here and his weakness is spark cube. Next, we have Hindrance Cards. Hindrance Cards are played on Sinis. So this Hindrance Card, so if my opponent were to lay down Tolcrow up here on me, up in my active Sinny space, they could also attach a Hindrance Card. Now the Hindrance Card, you will know it because it has this over here on the side, and it's going to have your your action of this hardened heart down here. So it's gonna tell you what it is, and it's gonna have this down here. So this card says specifically, this card may only be attached to a Cine with a defense less than 10. The Cine to which this card is attached has a plus five defense. Now, Tolcrow is worth 12, so they could not attach this card to Tolcrow. However, if they put Scornet on me, 
Well, that's less than 10. So they could add this just like so. He's leaving it out here so you can still see what you have here. And so now Scornet has a hardened heart. So Scornet is now six plus five. So I would now need 11 to defeat Scornet instead of just six. I'll actually leave him out here. Next we have equipment cards. So equipment cards, similar to hindrance cards, are going to have this banner over here on the side, and it is going to kind of show you an image of what happens with this equipment card. So in this case, this equipment is the belt of truth, and when this card is attached to a love animo, instantly draw two cards. And two, once per turn, as long as this card is attached to any animo in play, you may peek at the top four cards in your deck and return them to the top of your deck in any order. So an equipment card, like this one, can be attached to love. So for example, if I were to put this on my Saltini Ultra over here, I would instantly draw two cards, and that is a one-time effect. But my all-time effect is that as long as it is here, I can peek at my cards at any time. And then if I were to send this out to defeat my Scornet, and this would be enough to defeat Scornet, once this one goes to my discard pile, any equipment that is attached to your animal is also discarded as well. Similar as well as your defeated Sinnies. If this were to be defeated, this would go to the defeated pile, and the hindrance card would go to the discard pile. So if I threw this guy out there, they would both get discarded once my turn is over. And finally, we have story cards. So story cards up here, they're all gonna have this little banner up here that says one story card may be played per turn. And they're gonna have their name right here. So this is Slumber Tumbler. And this one says, select one standard power from your power pool and place this card on top. You may not use that power this turn. On your following turn, that power may be used twice. Discard this card afterwards. So for example, if we were to lay this down there, we would put it on top of our power, and I can't use it that turn, but my next turn, I could use it twice. And once I have done that, I would then discard this story card. Now story cards can only be played once per turn. So to do so, what you would do with any other story card is you would lay it out here. You would go do whatever the story card tells you to do, whether it's draw cards, whether it is place over here, you would then do that. You're gonna follow that once you've placed it out here in your play area from your hand. So in this case, we're gonna lay it up here. And that is how the different parts of the cards are read. That is how you can figure out what's going on. So this is for set two. Now, I do know that in the future, set one cards are going to be phased out. However, there are a lot of set one cards still in play. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what set one cards look like versus set two. Now, set one did not have truth seekers. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of our truth seeker over here. So for set one, Set one power cards are gonna look like this. They're gonna have, again, their type here in the middle and up in the corner to show you what they are. It is gonna have the name and the type of the power right here. So this is a faith power card. Again, it's kind of that purple blue color. That's again, another way that you can show how this is. Maybe for a kid who can't really read yet, you can look at the colors. It's going to have a Bible verse down here and its reference. Now, this one in particular came from the original demo starter deck, so he has a little stamp down here saying that he came from the Armorino deck. So your power would be placed like so. We also have the set one prayer, because Holy Spirit was not a, a card type in set one. Prayer was kind of that you could use it for anything, so prayer provides one faith, hope, or love power. Again, it has the verse down here. And this one came from, I believe this came from the reprint. 
So it's gonna have your little stamp down there, but it has your type up here and what it is. So we're gonna set that down here. Set one ultras. So this is Shine Spark Ultra. Shine Spark is a love animal. It is worth 12. It is a level one. So like set two has your little banners up here. Set one had them down here in this bar next to the cost. So for a level one Shine Spark, you could pay four of anything, or you could pay three love. So it was always better to try and do your love. However, if you didn't have all of your love out there, you could use four of anything to play Shine Spark. Shine Spark's attribute is sparkle. And Shine Spark's Bible verse is down here. It has your reference. And again, the hide it in your heart had your little verse bonus down here. So that is Shine Spark. This is Testify. So Testify, again, we know is a love animal. It's worth three. Its attribute is honesty. Its Bible verse is down here. We know that it is a level one. But Shine Spark over here does not have a cost. Shine Spark is free to play. There are no free to play animo in set two. This is a set one thing. Um, it also has an extra right here. So this would be similar to an action in set two. So that little black box on the set two cards. So when you would play this animal out here to either defeat a sinny or to get points, you would then do this little extra bit here, which is search your deck for any, any one power card. Now, that is pretty cool. We're going to do that down here. Again, it does not affect this down in your small group. Then we have Furball. Furball is a love for three. It is a level one. And it costs a specified one cost of love. So for example, we could use our prayer to pay for Furball. When Furball is sent out to either get points or defeat a sinny, it has an extra to search your deck for any virtuous animo. One virtuous animo. So you could go search for your Shine Spark Ultra if you wanted to. So that is going to be your next animal. Then we have a Faith animal. So Woolsey here, Woolsey is a level one, and Woolsey has a specified cost of one. However, Woolsey has a growth stage. So whereas in set two, the growth stages all have the same name. In set one, they did not. So that is something to keep in mind. However, how do you know which one it grows on top of? Well, instead of having to remember all of them, they have it right down here. So whereas this is a level one, this is a level two. And it tells you that it grows from Woolsey and has a little image down here of what Woolsey looks like. Flow has a specified cost of one. Now you can pay anything to pay this one. Flow trusts in him and your verse is down here where it is found and your verse bonus for hide it in your heart. Again, similar as in set two, if you have a growth stage, the bottom cards do not count. It is only the card that is on top. So instead of being three and eight, it is only going to be worth eight. Then we have Opalus. So Opalus is a love animal worth 12. It is level one, has a specified cost of two love and two of anything. However, Opalus has what we call an offering. So in set two, that would actually be an ability, that little green box down here. But in set one, this was called an offering. So when this card was in your small group, the offering says, you may discard this card at any time. If you do, search your deck for a love power card and add it to your power pool. So you know how we said that you can only have one, only one power card may be added to your power pool from your hand per turn. However, this card is kind of an exception to that rule because not only does it not play it from your hand, this one plays it from your small group. However, your small group, once you have used this offering, you have to discard Opalus and you can no longer use it for points. 
So you discard Opalus, you go search your deck for your love, and you immediately put it into your power pool for use. Set one Sinnies. So we have our Sinny over here. Again, it's kind of that blackish background that we have. So you have your Sinny, and you have your points up here, your cost. Again, it has the exclamation point to let you know that this does something. It has a one-time effect instead of your little infinity symbol over here. And this one says your opponent shuffles one Animo from their small group into their deck. Again, that's a one-time thing when he hits the playing field. He has his verse here. He has where it's found. And his weakness down here, he says his weakness is hoof it. So that would be played in the active Cine place of your opponent or if it's your opponent's card, on yours. Set one Megas. Set one Mega is very similar. It's gonna have your cost over here. It's going to have what it does. This is because he is a Mega and he's big. He does not have any sort of action on him. So you don't see that there. So he just has 15 cost. His weakness is Wariano down here. And in set one, we had equipment cards similar to in set two. You have your banner over here on the side so you can slide it under your cards and still see what it does. And this case, this is an Animo Recycler, like this little symbol here. So this says, when the Animo this card is attached to is to be discarded, discard this card instead and return the Animo to your small group. So for example, if I were out here trying to defeat my Fear Crow Mega, and I have attached this to my furball over here. I'm going to send out Shine Spark to try and defeat my Fear Crow. Well, that's not enough, so I'm going to send out my furball too. Well, that's 15 to defeat this Mega out here. So when this goes to be discarded, instead of discarding all of these because of this recycler effect here, we're going to discard this one and this one, but this one's going to go back to our small group. And then finally, we have story cards. Again, your story card is always going to have this little banner up here. Only one story card may be played per turn. In this case, this is Repent. So it has this active down here. It, this is also the Bible verses that you can read about what this talks about. So in this case, your opponent must discard their active sinny. Do not put the Cine in the defeated pile, as this does not count as defeating a Cine. If there are any Animo currently battling the Cine, discard them and award yourself the appropriate points. Repent may only be used once per game. So in this case, let's say I have my Shine Spark out here trying to defeat my Fear Crow Mega. Well, 12 isn't enough to defeat 15, but on this turn, I have my Repent. So I'm going to Repent Fear Crow. Fear Crow will then go to my opponent's discard pile, not defeated Cine pile. And in this case, Shine Spark, I would get 12 points. And then Shine Spark would go to my discard pile. Once my story card is complete, that would go to my discard pile as well. So those are your set one cards versus your set two. And that is how to read your cards, whether they are story cards, equipment cards, power cards, whatever your type of card is. That's how they are read. And that is also how to lay out your playmat for a game of Animo. If you have any questions, let us know. I hope this helps. So, truth seekers, keep finding virtues and defeating sinnies.